In our last video, we covered the BBE Soul vibe. Today, we continue October with the BBE Mindbender. first guitar you heard in there was just some basic chords with a low speed, low intensity chorus effect with just a little bit of dirt from the Greer light speed. And then I brought in a shaky vibrato effect on a clean guitar. Real simple pedal, you got your speed, your depth, a switch to engage the pedal, and a switch to go between the chorus and vibrato modes. It's an analog pedal, it uses a real bucket brigade chip and oscillator to do the pitch vibrato, and as you probably know by now, chorus is just vibrato with the original dry signal mixed in, like this. So with all that in mind, let's just mess around with these knobs and switches for a little bit and see what we can get. One thing I really hope you noticed is just how wide a range this pedal has in both speed and depth. Just listen to the sweep of the speed knob again. And same thing with the depth knob. All the way up, it's literally going up and down a half step on either side. So how do we put all this to good use? Well, the manual has a few suggested sample settings in the back, so let's start there with the Purple Rain Chorus. Then let's jump over to the Neil Young vibrato. How 
How about a rotary chorus? We'll try the slow and fast speeds. <laughs> And this is a Will Ray signature pedal. How about a Will Ray faux Leslie vibrato? <laughs> And because why the heck not, here's that Will Ray space vibrato. I've spent a lot of time with this pedal over the past week or so, just learning about it, recording those demo jams, and figuring out what it is that I want to show you in this video. And I found that this pedal has a crossover point. And by that, I mean a low and shallow chorus or vibrato is going to go largely unnoticed unless you're really listening for. And if you're trying to add dimension as like a subtle effect, that's exactly what you want. But there comes a point where the depth compounded by the speed creates something that goes from a subconscious back of mind kind of thing to something very upfront and present. Maybe that's why they call it the mind bender. I mean, look at the suggested settings again and notice how there's just a minor twist of a knob's difference between these pairs of settings. And I suppose some of that is because there's quite a bit of overlap when it comes to modulation effects, especially when rotary gets invited to the party. But it's also because these knobs have such a wide range. There's a lot of combinations in these spaces that we can explore. And that could help explain why the manual starts out by saying that this pedal is the result of guitarist Will Ray working with BBE to come up with a pedal that simulates a Leslie rotating speaker. And then on the very next page saying, the mind bender is an analog chorus vibrato. So you see, there's just a lot we can do with these two knobs here. It goes on to say that it uses a bucket brigade circuit patterned after the Boss VB2 for pitch vibrato and the way huge electronics blue hippo for the analog chorus. Now, patterned after is something that's kind of hard to pin any real meaning to. So let's just listen to the mind bender and the VB2 back to back. <laughs> Pretty similar. Now, I don't have a blue hippo, but to me, the chorus sounds like my boss CE2 Waza when I put it into CE1 chorus mode. <laughs> As for the rotary sound, I can see where they're coming from with that. But I'm sorry, my heart will always belong to the RT20. Whatever it really means, I think the decision to pattern the Mindbender after the VB2 in Blue Hippo is pretty amazing when you consider the first Mindbender came out in 2008. This is the version 2, which came out in 2013. 
That's before the Waza version of the VB2 came out in 2016, and before the Mark II version of the Blue Hippo came out in 2015. So good choices there. Those were some incredibly difficult pedals to find at the time, and even the Waza version of the VB2 is pretty expensive today. The Mindbender is very much a vintage style chorus vibrato pedal, and by that, I mean there's just no hiding that second off-pitch voice that's riding up and down in there. Compared with something like the CE5 Chorus Ensemble, which can sound thick and lush without sounding quite so wavy. To be honest, this isn't the style of chorus that I tend to reach for, but I still had a lot of fun using it to put together the demo jams for this video, like this one. Something a little different in there, just an earworm that I wanted to get recorded and explore a little bit. I started out with a pretty quick chorus for the chord progression. Say that five times fast. And then a medium intensity vibrato for the second guitar with just a little bit of light speed overdrive. Bass players, I haven't forgotten about you. There's a slow and subtle chorus effect on the bass in there, too. Now, a lot of times people will ask in the comments if a pedal I've talked about is worth the current asking price. And that's tricky. I usually just give a non-answer of it depends, which makes nobody happy. I think this pedal is pretty simple to understand. It's very transparent about what it does. I mean, how much, how fast, and if you spend some time with this pedal, there's just a whole lot you can get out of it. For about 60 bucks, you get a true bypass metal enclosure analog chorus vibrato pedal with a cool flashing light up top. If you're after that vintage modulation sound, this is just a tremendous value. BBE knocks it out of the park once again. Something I want you to keep in mind as we wrap this up. True enlightenment only comes when we are willing to explore the area left and right of center of our guitar pedal effects knob. Seriously, don't be afraid to use the full range of these knobs. Life's too short to leave your pedals set up like this. I'll catch you on the next one.